everybody! Welcome back to my little pocket dimension of personal discussion, this time with a new upgraded microphone! Yay! <laughs> uh, I'm your lovely voice and host, and today I'm going to be getting up at 4 in the morning to go to a 7.30 class, and everyone will be concerned with my resting bitch face while I drink my coffee. Story of my life. Okay, okay, but really, everyone and their mother gets pissed off about something, and that could be anything. <laughs> Hashtag relatable, am I right? <laughs> okay. The real topic of today's video is just five things that peeved me off about art school. When I started the script, there was a lot of drama going on about an art teacher chastising her students for using iPads to draw because it's easier, but it's like, Lady, we're in quarantine. We are literally living in the digital era. I think you can make an exception for your students wanting things to be easier because times are really tough right now and we're in a recession, but okay, whatever. But yeah, this whole entire video is completely inspired by that story because, well, I've had my own teachers act like that in the past, but that's beside the point. I must post my own disclaim of Italy here though. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Because, uh, frankly, I love going to art school, but like many things that we love, there are flaws and some things that need to be addressed or dealt with. After all, art school is a great place to make friends and network yourself. And hey, I'm going back to art school here pretty soon, so now's as good as time as any to complain about it before I go back. Number one, unnecessary classes. Hi, just for some background checks on my end, I'm a studio artist with a focus on drawing, and I go to a university for art school. I'm speaking on these experiences alone, so keep in mind I'm American, so if you don't have to deal with things like student financial debt and all this other stuff, then yeah. Good for you. But yeah, while my school doesn't specialize in art, it does have a complete art department dedicated to its campus. And while trying to get a degree in studio art has its rewards, it can be a straight up pain in the ass sometimes. I'm sorry. And yes, I do understand that it is a necessity that if you're going to be a studio artist, that you need to learn multiple sets of skills, like glass making or screen printing, photography, mixed media, painting, drawing, jewelry making, and let's not forget all of the art history courses that you have to take even if you're not an art history major. And you know, I know a lot of students who find art history to be super interesting and they absolutely love it. Me, however? Uh, it's just hard for me to stay awake during class, I know I'm a terrible student, and unless I'm looking up certain things in my own spare time, I honestly, it, it's hard for me to care about art history, I'm sorry. <laughs> Now, for me, one of the main struggles is trying to pay for $1,000 classes every semester and having to deal with unnecessary classes that are required in order to graduate. For example, I spent three years paying for prerequisite classes that just weren't necessary for my major, and I had to wait forever just to be able to get into drawing classes. Money tends to add up, and after a while, a person can find themselves spending thousands of dollars if there isn't help from financial aid. And even if there is, there's always student debt and the high chance that you won't get a job in a highly saturated market like art. It sucks, and once again, I've learned a lot since I started art school, but there are just some things you either don't need to learn, or some things you're just better learning when an assignment just isn't crammed down your throat. And once again, it is very good to be versatile in a set of skills, but at the same time, just because you took a class on jewelry making doesn't mean you're good at it. I am one of those people. Number two, for some reason, everything must have meaning to it. Okay, this is a strange one to explain, since this could mean just about anything. If I had to describe what I was talking about in one clip, it would be this. Look at us. We're just air conditioners. I mean, after all, we're just walking around on the planet, breathing, conditioning the air. I mean, it's symbiotic. One of the main benefits of an art class is that you actually get feedback on your work in studio. It's nice to have other artists in the studio with you telling you, okay, this is working, this isn't, and this is what you can do to do better next time. However, 
You are also being graded on how well you give feedback to other students, and while that doesn't sound hard, sometimes it's really hard because you get the people who are completely silent, or there are the people who talk so much that nobody else has anything else to say to follow up on it. Or worse, sometimes you just don't have anything to say other than, I like it. But you can't just say, I like it, because that doesn't give any proper feedback to the artist you're trying to help. And hey, I get it, sometimes it's hard to find the right words to say, you know? Especially if you have like an early morning class and you're just not awake enough to give like some kind of profound statement to help somebody grow when you give them feedback. One of the ways I get around like the trouble of trying to find more ways to say I like it other than I just like it is that I try to find the hidden story that's in each art piece. Whether we realize it or not, an artist is always leaving something of themselves in each of their pieces. And who knows, maybe you're finding something that maybe the artist didn't realize themselves based on your own perceptions. Now one of the main things that can help you also, like when it comes to a critique, is look at how the work is made. Look at the texturing, look at the composition, look at the colors being used and try to decipher why they use them. Also, guys, ask questions. Hey, why did you do this? Hey, why did you add this kind of marking or texture? It always helps, especially when you're like me and you want to talk about your work but can't because you gotta let the other students uh, talk about your work before you can. Also, another tip whenever you're going into a critique, Try to be as unbiased as possible, because sometimes you can give off both positive destructive criticism and negative destructive criticism. To simplify those meanings down to the most basic way possible, it's like saying I like this art piece because I only like you, and saying I hate this art piece because I hate you with a burning passion. Yeah, both are very unhelpful in every possible way. Number three, the parental perception. Now, this is on the list because I know there are many artists out there with parents who disapprove of your choice to become artists. Some people go off to college, as state, or move out with nothing but the clothes on their back and get a job and have to struggle to become successful in the industry. In my situation, I'm a college art student who works from home. I've never been in a dorm and all I have to do is drive 10 minutes away to get to my college campus. In that case, I consider myself lucky because it's cheaper and more efficient to go college from home. However, Neither one of my parents have experienced college even when the opportunity was handed to them on a silver platter. As a result, I have one parent who's living vicariously through my experience, and the other thinks that just because I come home after a long day of painting, drawing, or whatever I'm doing that day, it means that I'm being lazy when I just want to decompress by watching TV or YouTube, whatever. Also, by the way, don't let anybody shame you for wanting to relax after a long day of school, work, whatever it is that you do. Because, well, you know, everybody needs a break. And yeah, this sounds like first world problems and really shouldn't bother anyone, but it still sucks sometimes to hear snide comments about how easy my life is just because I know how to draw a figure. If anyone ever tells you that creating art is easy, tell them that they should do it so they can see how easy it really is! Seriously, these people are the same kind of people who think that digital art is created by the push of a button after they tell the computer to draw it a pretty unicorn. Number four! Everything is expensive, oh my god. Um, yeah, if you're a traditional studio art student, invest in some Marachan to get you through each semester instead of Starbucks. And I know that's a stereotype for college in a nutshell, but it is very prevalent within the art student, especially. Honestly, yeah, while I've learned a lot and grown from the art school experience, uh, most of my money ends up going to my art supplies, and considering how demanding the workload is for art students without any revenue coming in, uh, I'm just lucky that my parents are at least supportive enough to not let me only eat ramen. <laughs> If you're rich, then paying for things like art supplies is an easy task, but for most of us out here who are dragging ourselves up and paying for the art supplies for ourselves, e yeah, it's um, going to leave us a little financially dry, especially with multiple art classes at once. But hey, um, 
there might be a case where you don't have to pay for a book. That'll be nice. But yeah, just because you're not paying like $200 for a book doesn't mean you're not going to be investing in pencils, inking pens, drawing materials, charcoals, whatever is on the syllabus. Even if you grab the cheapest possible materials needed for classes, the price for everything can rack up pretty quick, and seeing a list of needed materials can be pretty overwhelming. My only advice in this situation, just pay as you go and only get what you need when you need it. Also, another dumb thing, uh, invest in snacks, that way you don't have to go to, like, Starbucks every day in case you start to get hungry in the middle of classes. Keep a snack in your bag and keep yourself energized, alright? We don't need anybody fanning in the middle of class due to a lack of food because you spent all your money on art supplies. And finally, number five. The professor thinks they know what they're doing, but they really don't. This is a dumb story of a rare situation in my case, but one that needs to be told. I failed digital media class the first time around because I had a professor who was an art snob that had no idea what he was doing. This was a guy who would interrupt class whenever everybody was in the middle of working because he had an idea that must be told, and everyone had to change whatever they were doing while struggling to learn the program that he had no idea how to use to begin with. No, seriously, every time I had a question about something like Adobe Illustrator because I only knew how to use Photoshop during the time, he'd try to do what he thought would work, and then he'd just leave me hanging with a, sorry, can't help you. One time he made us play a game where we had to fill in the blank with things like childhood toy, a time of day, a specific art style, and so on and so forth, and he randomized everything. And we all got like a mishmash of everybody's random answers, including our own. And I had to somehow create a creepy Barbie inside a well with a creepy vibe outside of my tablet. And yeah, we had to incorporate real images into it. Yeah, by the end, uh, Barbie looked how I felt, and that was dead inside. But, uh... Yeah, I, uh, I, I kind of failed the class, and luckily after that, I took it again a year later, but with a completely different professor who actually knew the ins and outs of the programs he was using and teaching us how to use, and best of all, he was organized enough to stay on task with his curriculum. He was an encouraging professor who always seemed genuinely excited about his students' work. He'd let me sleep in class if we were talking about Photoshop, since I basically proved to him that I already had an idea of what I was doing. Although, fun fact about this particular professor, he's really into hunting mushrooms, like, out in the wild. And it's kind of sad, but before quarantine happened, I was ready to get him a end-of-the-semester, like, gift and give him a Mario hat. Unfortunately, 2020 happened, and we all know what happened there, so... It, yeah... But yeah, Professor Mario over here became one of my favorite professors of all time after that. And you know, one of the main reasons for that is that he never creatively stifled me for having a cartoony art style. Actually, you know what? Let's make that a bonus round number six on our list. Uh, teachers, please, for the love of God, stop shaming your artists for having a more cartoony art style, especially when they can adapt to what you're teaching. It's really annoying when you keep bringing it up. Okay. Alright everybody, that's what I've got for today, but before I go, huge thank you to my Lucky Dragon and Cosmic Rainbow Dragon patrons, Grim Baby, Kyle Christensen, and Omega Jared, for giving me their support. You guys are the best, and your support actually means the world to me. If you want in on the Patreon action, then you can look in the link in the description below for early access content, including videos, work in progress screenshots, and other Patreon exclusive content. Thank you everyone so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day. Bye!